Hello everyone and welcome to another board game review from FUDS. This week we've got Tragedy Looper. It's another game from Back of Fire and from Zedman Games. But it's an interesting game which, until recently, was man it very hard to find in the UK. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I I found it so hard I had to try and find search online to try and find this thing. I think I eventually bought it from Hungry Meeples, I think I got it from in the end. First of Meeples, whatever. As you can see, it is in the same style as the previous game. In fact, I've still got the game behind me. Yes, I'm recording all these on the same day. There we are, that's the game. And again, as I said earlier, it is from Zedman Games. Not a sponsored video. I'm just reviewing three games from them just out of pure coincidence because they have three games I picked up from, from my shelf. So, let's turn the box over and see what we have. Again, the box is the wrong way up again. There we are. You know the time loop fiction genre. We remain cast and go back in time to try to avoid what hap what disaster happen is going to happen. Well now, that power is yours. Tragedy Looper allows a team of protagonists to go back in time to stop tragedies from happening. A mastermind will try to unfold these tragedies while the protagonists have to find out what patterns are hidden, what evil plots are at work, and what roles the characters are before they run out of loops. In each loop, the protagonists try to gain as much information as possible in order to stop the tragedies from the next loop. Sometimes after the help of characters, the protagonists can form a good will bonds with them. But if the characters become too paranoid, bad things can happen. If the intrigue of a plot come to fruition, the characters or even protagonists can perish. Tragedy Looper contains ten scenarios of various plots and subplots. One player will be a mastermind, whose goal it is to make sure the tragedies unfold. The other players are the protagonists, whose job it is to stop these tragedies from occurring. And these scenarios are only beginning. The box contains everything you need to create your own adventures, create more adventures for protagonists, and more devious plots for a mastermind. So we've got several tutorials to get started, easy to read data boards and summary sheets for players, separate rule books for mastermind protagonists, eating varied characters to build your own scripts with, and easily expanded by yourself. It's a two to four player game which Supposedly it takes 120 minutes, two hours to complete. Depending on how good you are or how bad you are, it takes more or less time, of course. And it is actually quite an interesting game. Now, before we get into this, I am going to be showing you the first card for, for a mastermind. If you are planning on getting, playing a game, you might want to avoid it yourself, but in fact, I'll just think about how I'm going to do it. Now, this game comes out in a normal kind of box. I'll slightly more flimsy than the rest of them, but it's still a pretty good cardboard box. Put that to one side for now. Inside the game, you just got pretty much all loose there, actually. Let's move that to one side. We have four locations. You got the shrine, which goes there. You got the hospital. Which goes there. You tell where you go because it's got the little location things in the corner there. You got the school, which goes there. And you've got the city, which goes there. Now these locations make up the cornerstone of a game. And if you want to know what type of game it is, if you've ever played a, a visual novel or I think I call them kinetic novels sometimes now, where you've got to solve a crime by choosing your own path. Ooh, things floating down from my um, shelf and above my um, monitor there. For instance, Fate Stay Night. Perfect example of this. It's a choose your own adventure board game experience. Get that out of the shadow. Now these boards could have been a single board folded together, but I think the creator, Backerfire, wanted to give it the chance. Let's say we want to have a scenario about the school. Yeah, throw that away and put a different board there. Maybe on a different location. Now I'm not sure if that's been done yet, but it's a possibility. And this is what you get in the box. You get. A mastermind's handbook. Do not read this if you're not the 
uh, G, effectively with GM because this is an RPG style game. You got the the basic steps things. You get one for each player. You've got first steps and basic tragedy plots and scenarios and roles. These I'll come to a bit later. You got this, which is a timer. Again, more about that in a bit. Throw that right in the middle for now. You got the player's handbook. This one's for players. Mastermind can read it as well because it gives you a basic outline of how you play the game. You get decks of cards. You get scripts cards and a leader card and extra cards for use for spe special scenarios. You get the um, player cards. Once you got one with diary, you got one with time loop, loop I think. You get one with clock. When you get the masterminds deck. Now these decks, these three decks, are all exactly the same. They each get a Panai minus one, forbidden movement, good wall plus two, movement left and right, good wall plus one, Panai plus one, move it up and down. Bit intrigue, that's what they get. And all three players have the same effective deck, just with different logos on them, so I know it's their deck. Their Masterminds deck is somewhat different. They get Movement Diagonal, Intrigue plus two, Paranoia plus one, Paranoia minus one, Forbid Goodwill, Forbid Paranoia, Paranoia, Intrigue, Movement left and right, Movement up and down. And so, the mastermind of the players have their own deck of what they can do. You also have a characters. You have the patient. A boy student, a nurse, class rep, police officer, shrine maiden, informant, office worker, girl student, doctor, a rich man's daughter, mystery boy, alien, recognise her from a previous game, a regardly being, a pop idol, journalist, a boss, and a henchman. Now those are also part of the cornerstone of the game. You've then got little tokens, you've got little good war tokens, which is your hearts. You've got paranoia tokens, which are little gloomy things. You've got intrigue tokens, which are Little goldy things. You got these tokens, which are more event-based and generally mean certain things. That one, for instance, goes on the track there, and that determines how we play how we play the game. And I'm going to throw this up there to get it out of the way. Who is out of the way again? I'm going to look at these now. Leader card just determines who is the first player. Extra cards you can ignore. Then you get to a script card. Now I'm going to show you the script card the protagonist gets to see for the first one, the first steps. There we are. That's all I get to see. I think it's going to have trouble focusing in it. There we are. It's a four day loop. I know on day one nothing's going to happen. Day two there's a murder. Day three there's a suicide. And day four nothing happened. Uh, no special rules. When it was the first steps, there's two or three loops, depending on how difficult on it. There's four days per loop. Now the Masterminds card actually is a lot different to that. I'm not going to tell you what's on it, aside against that, but it gives you, as well as telling you what days the what instance are, it gives you the cast of the game and what they are. For instance, I'm actually going to put that face down. I'm going to put it to one side, actually, so that you can't see it, but I can. This game starts with... We always start in the same locations. It starts with the boy student. And a boy student will always start in the school, because it's got this little school icon in the corner. If I show you this boy student close-up... Actually, I'll show you the card, actually. 
Go on, here you are. Paranormal Limit 2 starts with score is a student and a boy. And for two, goodwill, remove one paranoia from any other student in his location. We start with a girl student. And again, a girl student also starts in the school. We have a shrine maiden. Her course starts on a shrine. Now, if you notice hers, she actually has a little location with an X on it, which means she can't go to the city. We have the police officer. And he starts from a city. We have the office worker and the doctor. Office worker also starts from a city. And I imagine the doctor is going to start in the hospital. Yeah. So that's how a game will start off. And I should really tell you how you actually win the game. If you're a protagonist, you win the game by not losing the game. Yeah, I know that sounds pretty silly, but it makes sense. If you're the mastermind, you win the game by making sure they don't win the game. So... Explain how loops work. If you are a mastermind, you need to avoid the protagonists beating the game on any other loops. This get set has three loops, or two loops if you're playing the advanced game, and four days. So, you play through those first four days. A day has each player playing a card. They can be played on location, on a person, but it tells that person or location to do something. For instance, if I remove these cards away again, you've got a Mastermind deck, V, player 1, player 2, and player 3. Player 1 may say to a boy student, you're going to a city. They do is face down so that the Terry other people don't know what we're doing. They can discuss between themselves what we want to do. Now, player two might start to play their once only card on the Shrine Maiden to give a good will. And player three might suspect the police officer as being a double agent and forbid him from moving. Whereas the um, Mastermind also plays three cards. Rather than playing one card, he actually plays all three. And he plays them on their things. For instance, he might add some paranoia to a Shrine Maiden. He might add intrigue to a school. And he might make the police officer try and move. Now, these people do, his location, do their actions at the same time. But it's a good idea to do them in order. I always do it in clockwise order, starting from the hospital. So... The Shrine Maiden, she gets two goodwill, but she also gets paranoia. So you put the characters on the Shrine Maiden. Now School gets an intrigue. The intrigue character goes up there. And the boy, because he can move, he will move there to the city. Because it's not a once-only card, this one goes back. This one goes back. Because this one is not one only, this one goes back. This one, as a one only, cannot be used again this loop. I'll put it back on deck just for continuity sake, though. Now, a police officer would move, but without forbidden movement, so he doesn't. Both of these are one only, so they don't go back, but I'll put them back for now. So that's how at the end of day one. I'll also be counted on Shrine Maiden of a school. And so each of these characters might have a certain role to play. If we get one of our little sheets there, if we look at our roles, you can have a key person, a killer, a brain, a cultist, a conspiracy theorist, a serial killer, a curmudgeon, or a friend. 
A certain roles can refuse goodwill. For instance, the killer, you can choose. The brain, you can choose. The cultist, you always refuse. And the curmudgeon, you can choose. However, not all roles are in all games. For instance, each each game has a plot and a subplot. Or if you're playing with advanced, with a normal game, you've got a role, plot and two subplots. And the plots determine how you can actually win the game. For instance, Murder Plan has one key person and one killer, and one brain. Light of Avenger only has a brain. A Place to Protect has a key person and a cultist. Shadow Ripper has a conspiracy theorist and a serial killer. An Assassin Rumor has a conspiracy theorist. And a Hideous Script has a conspiracy theorist, not to two curmudgeons, and a friend. Now, the interesting thing is, if you have a serial killer, you know you've got the Shadow Ripper because there's only one serial killer. Now, a serial killer is quite a... quite a worrisome character, actually, because neither the protagonist nor the uh, mastermind can actually control him. Because if you look at the, the serial killer, mandatory, day end. Exactly one of a character in location, that character dies. So if... This, let's say, for instance, you've got that set up. A location with one person, a location with two people, a location of three people. Now, if at day end I say nothing happens, there might be a serial killer, there might not. But if there is a serial killer, you know it's not on a school. However, if I say suddenly you wake up in the morning and you find the body of a girl student, but you know, something has happened and the doctors killed a girl student or girl student has committed suicide. Something has happened to a girl student. And so if you think there's a serial killer, you know it's a doctor because there's only one other person. However, let's say if a police officer is a serial killer, the police officer is not going to kill somebody because there's two other people. And likewise, if you think the shrine man is a serial killer, no other people there, so there's nobody to kill, so nothing would happen. And different loss conditions as well. For instance, Murder plan. There's no loss condition there. Life of Avenger, loss condition, loop end. Too intrigued at the brain starting location. Now, if I'm trying to put no intrigue in a location, you know that there's something going on there. And if you know that there's too intrigued at a location at the end of a location in the game ends, you know you've got the Life of Avenger. Although, if it's at school, it could also be a place to protect because uh, end of loop, too intrigued at a school. Now, Shadow of a Ripper, again, has no plot rules. On setting rumour, mastermind ability, one times infinity, so once per loop, you may play one intrigue at any location. So you can set off that rumour yourself. And hideous script, script creation, yeah, you can create one, uh, zero to two commissions. So that's only one way to lose a game, with intrigue, location. So how else do, how else do you lose a game? Key person. Mandatory, if this character dies, protagonists lose and the loop ends immediately. So if somebody dies and the loop ends, you know that person's probably the key person. And you know to try and protect them on the next loop. But maybe that's not the only way the um, mastermind can win. Killer. Optional day end. Key person is the same location as, and it has at least two intrigue. Key person dies. Optional day end. Character has at least four intrigue. Protagonists die. So the killer can kill a key person if I've got intrigue. But maybe you want to put intrigue on a serial killer to make it look like they're the killer, not the serial killer. And get the serial killer to kill the um, key person. A brain. Place one intrigue in this location, or character in this location. Courtist. Optional. Ignore forbid intrigue in this location, or any character in this location. 
Experience Severest, Mastermind Ability, place one Paranoia on a character in this location. Serial Killer, Mandatory, Day End. Exactly one of a character in this location, that character dies. Commotion, optional, doesn't do anything. Friend, Lost Condition, Loop End, if this character is dead, reveal its role. So basically, if you kill the friend at the end of a loop, the um, heroes lose, but they then know it's a friend. And also, mandatory, start of a loop, if his role has been revealed, the character gets goodwill. Because you know it's a friend, you know you can trust it. And so, if you manage to get to the end of a loop, and you haven't lost, the heroes win. Simple as. If you end the loop early, or you get to the end and you lose, then the board is reset, tokens are reset, and you go into loop two. And you try again. But this time, the heroes know certain things. They know that the girl student died at school with the doctor there. They know that I was trying to put intrigue with the school. They know that I didn't want the police officer to move. So what on earth am I trying to do? I lost a loop. Did they lose a loop because of the school? Did they lose a loop because the girl student was a friend? Or the key person? They don't know. Well, they all have an idea. And the second loop, they've got more information to go on. But so does Mastermind. The Mastermind doesn't just have a single thread he can travel down. He might try have been off-putting him during the first loop, and we're trying a different tactic in the second loop. Or maybe we'll try and do the same thing again. Maybe he's got a different way of doing that. It's a really different game on the second loop. And then, again at the end of the second loop, if the protagonists lose, they get a third try. If they win, they win the game. But if they lose, they get a third try to get through it. If at the end of a third loop, on this particular challenge, they still haven't won, they still don't lose the game. If they can name every single character's role, even if they didn't win the game, they can still have a moral victory by saying that the doctor was a serial killer, the girl student was a key person, the police officer was a brain, the office worker was just a person, the boy student was a conspiracy theorist, and so on. And if they name every role correct, they still win. If they get one wrong, then the mastermind wins the game. And the great thing about the game is, you're always script cards. Each two rows, for instance, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and that was 1. You've got 10 preset scripts. And also, in the Mastermind Handbook, There is a script creation guide. It tells you how to create it, how to make it, how to determine how many loops, what cast to go with. And play rewards. It lets you create your own game with it. And that's a great thing about this game. And the other great thing is there's an expansion. Back of Fire and Zedman have actually brought out a new expansion called Midnight Circle. It's actually a combination of two separate expansions from the Japanese version. Now I'm not going to actually show you too much about this because I've not actually played it myself. I've not played the expansion but again you've got the Midnight Circle Mastermind Handbook. You've got the Midnight Circle Player's Handbook. You've got the new car, new paper for everybody. You can get in here. A little 
deck of cards with some new rolls. Again, I'm going to move that one around so that you don't see those. You got the scientist. You get the forensic specialist. You get the AI. And you get the illusion. See, so that's the other character from the other game. And you got new script cards and protagonist cards. For instance, number one. Basic tragedy, four to five. Six days per loop. It's got a murder, a butterfly effect, suicide and hospital incident. And it's got 12 new scripts to go over new characters. Which you can play along. It's got new rules for creating stuff as well. So the game expands its usefulness and you can play even more. And so that has been Dreaded Looper and its expansion, Midnight Circle. There we are. Now, should you buy this game? Yes. If you are a fan of anime, if you enjoy games or anime like Fate's Day Night, if you enjoy mystery, if you ever watched Higurashi or Umineko, if you like murder mysteries, go ahead, buy the game. It's great to play, it takes a bit of time, it takes a bit of learning, but once you and your friends have, have become masterminds and heroes, once you can learn to make your own games from it, and you can enjoy it to its best. Definitely worth a play. Definitely worth a buy. Another great game from Back of Fire. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment on what other games you want me to review. Again, if I've got the game, I'll review it. If if I don't have a game, if someone I know has got a game, I'll see whether I can review it from them. If you want more of the same, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do for you. As ever, thank you very much for watching. My name has been Fuds. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.